it's Leslie in Tennessee and it is a mid-September and I just thought we'd take a peek at my garden and then we're going to try harvesting some sweet potatoes. So behind me is um, the garden that has been harvested and about a month ago I put in some buckwheat as a cover crop which I will before it goes to seed cut. Buckwheat is one of those wonderful crops that if you want to plant a cover crop you don't need a lot of equipment to be able to get it under. It pulls out really easy and it chops really fine and it grows really fast. So that's fantastic. We still have a few remnants here. A few little uh, tomatoes. The smaller tomatoes will continue to ripen uh, much faster than the large tomatoes. So I like to keep the juliettes and cherry tomatoes and things like that. Even though they look kind of scraggly, they're still producing enough for uh, salads and a little bit to share. We still have uh, green peppers that are almost ready to come out. We've pulled out most of the green peppers so far. And then we have some uh, yellow wax beans that we've just allowed to stay in the garden because we want them to go to seed so that we'll have seed for them for next year. Then around behind me, we're getting the greenhouse uh, ready for the fall. Um, we've had some of the smaller fruited tomatoes, so we went ahead and uh, transplanted them. These were started in uh, June from seed, so kind of late. Um, then we transplanted them and just recently moved them here into the greenhouse because it has been way too hot to have them in the greenhouse before now. Uh, we may get a little bit of fruit off of them. We've got a plum tomato and a small cherry tomato here and they're delicious. Uh, then we've got our square foot garden here. We don't have it gridded or anything yet, but this will have lettuce, spinach, kale, beets, Sometimes I put in some onions or garlic in here as well. Um, but that's just about ready to go. That's all watered and I will get that planted soon. It's rather late. It's almost too late, but last year I was planting lettuce even le very late into the year. And uh, by God's grace, we got lettuce out of that and some spinach. So I'm thankful for that. All right, next we are going to harvest our sweet potatoes. Now last year we had an amazing crop that uh, from, from such a small area we had 120 pounds of good sweet potatoes. We had about another 10 pounds that the voles got. So this year our space is 10 feet 8 inches by 30 inches wide. Again a small space so it'll be really interesting to see what we get out of here for sweet potatoes and I know the voles have been in here, so no guarantees this year on what we're going to get, but that's just life when you're farming, right? A good part of the joy of the journey is just being able to be out in the fresh air and sunshine and enjoy the beauty of the fresh air and hearing the birds singing. So um, even if you don't get abundant harvest, there's still a blessing from having a garden and being out, outside getting that exercise and fresh air. So. Let's go look at the sweet potatoes. All right, uh, we've, I've already removed all of the green. This whole area that we laid down, the landscape fabric, uh, was covered with vines and probably another foot and a half out all the way around. And I wanted to leave the leaves this year because it does help to feed the plants to produce the sweet potatoes. So we mowed that all down and I've cut this back and was quite surprised to see the bed quite mounded up here. And I thought, oh no, we have nests of voles or something under there. So we're about to see what is actually under, <laughs> under here. I'm gonna start by removing um, our drip system. We have a wonderful drip system here uh, that we use on all of our raised beds. And I guess we use them in the in-ground beds as well. I'm just going to go ahead and lift this back and get it out of the way. The sweet potato bed ends right about here. And the wonderful thing about growing in raised beds is you really don't need a lot of space if you're willing to grow vertically. So we trellis almost everything. So all of our tomatoes, cucumbers, anything that can be trellised, uh, cantaloupes, everything grows up. So we don't need a lot of ground space. I'm excited to see what's in here and I hope we've got some good stuff to share. So you can see the vines are here. And let's 
see what we got. Well, we got some small ones here that do look nice. These are still edible. You know, when you buy little potatoes in the grocery store, they charge you twice as much, right? They're a gourmet item. Now, the tricky thing with sweet potatoes is you do not want to damage them when you're pulling them out. So we've got some real beauties here. Excellent. They look absolutely beautiful. You don't want to, when you're digging potatoes, you don't want to use a fork. I don't like to use a fork because I find that I end up by piercing them. And I really don't want to pierce my potatoes. Well, how do you like that one? That's a good one. Even these are good. Now it's got a little bit of a vol bite in it. I'm just going to throw this other stuff aside for now. Um, I usually wait an, another month. I'm glad I didn't wait because, ooh, this one's perfect. Um, if I would have waited, they would have been even larger. All right, another beauty right here. This mix is incredibly soft with the vermiculite and the uh, and the peat. The voles got into this one too. If anybody knows a really good way to catch voles, you just let me know because I will do it. Yep, they got me good here too. Let's see. That one's a nice one. Oh, those are some of the longest ones you've ever grown. Uh-huh. They really are. And I have to be careful because they're not cured yet, which means that the skins are kind of tender. We may have to switch and have Steve pull this one out and I go behind the camera. Let's just see if I can let's just see if I can get it. Now all of these slips were started from um, started from uh, one or two sweet potatoes. So I got a lot of slips. See Didn't you make a YouTube on the slips? Yes, I did. Okay, so let's see. What do we got here? You want me to grab it? I think I can get it. Hold on. There we go. Beautiful. With the soil being so soft, of course, they grow very well. Not sure what's up with this unique shape this year, but I've had this is quite a few that kind of have that lobed look. Again, I just have to be oh that one, look at that. They did me in. Okay. Not all of them though. There's still a lot of good ones here. Whoop! You can see how nasty they can be. Mm. Alright, I guess everybody's gotta eat, right? Throw some for you and some for nature. And that's okay. We always have plenty. We really do always have plenty. Another beautiful one here. My wheelbarrow's filling up and I still have quite a bit of the bed left to go. Oh my, there's more under here. It's so mostly some vines. Let's see. Nice one. Wow, if this keeps up, we're going to outdo last year. Uh, that's still pretty edible. Mm -hmm. Now, last year, I did this all in my dress. And I'm in a skirt this year, but this year I was smart and I put on some natural bug repellent. Because last year I got eaten alive.
Look at that mama spider with all the babies on it. Is that babies on it or what? Yeah, I think so. I just say this was a home wrecker there. Oh, look at the babies are all moving around. Yeah. Okay. Now for the we're done with the commercial. Okay. Go back. <laughs> all right, back to the sweet potatoes. Okay. Now we are in zone seven. I planted in uh, oh, kind of mid, mid to late May, and we're in mid-September. I'm very thankful that I did not wait. These are going to be so delicious. We just like to roast them at a high temperature, like 425. Oops. I'm cracking them. 425 until the juice just runs out of them. Just tremendous flavor. All right, gotta kind of dig. I did stop watering just so that it would be drier and easier to harvest. Try to get these out without cracking them.
beautiful. Yes. Did lose some to the voles, but not too bad. Did we have more vole damage last year? You know, we may have. We're getting near the end. This, a, this is the best we've ever done. One or two plants right here. Oh, look at that. It's like bananas. Yeah, you're right. Oh my. Look at There's a big one on the back side. Oh, yeah, right here. <laughs> yes. I'm trying to get them without cracking them. Yeah. <sighs> oh, got that one. That one I got too much. It's all from one slip? From one sweet potato? Um, no, I think it was from a couple sweet potatoes. No, I mean this batch right here. Oh, no, what? not all from one slip. Okay. No. no, I think I put in... Um... I mean this last one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because that one had... We should have counted how many it had. <laughs> Next year. So what varieties are these? These are, um, I believe they're Beauregards. Beauregards, okay. I'm thinking, I, I can't remember if this is from potatoes we bought last year or if I just went and got an organic potato. Um, I can't remember, but anyway, these are slips that we started. I do believe we've met, met the end. All right. Good job. Okay. Not sure how many pounds that is, but it's definitely a good load from a 10, 10 foot 8 inch by 30 inch bed. And I'll try to post how many pounds we got once we have a chance to weigh them. Thanks for watching. In addition to harvesting, um, the sweet potatoes. I wanted to share with you a couple other little things. If you are interested in removing the vines, I have a video on harvesting sweet potatoes on my YouTube channel that will show you about removing all those leaves. And I want to talk a little bit about the growing medium because that's often a question of people, what did you actually grow them in? So here is the bed that we harvested the sweet potatoes from. It's 10 feet 8 inches by 30 inches 
and the mix, Steve, if you could just come down here, I'm going to, the mix is very soft and pli friable. Friable means it breaks apart very easily. And this is coarse vermiculite, which, which breaks down very slowly. Medium or fine vermiculite breaks down too quickly. Um, and then we also have a variety of compost in here. Some homemade compost and some store-bought compost, uh, such as worm castings, some quality steer manure. And then there's also peat moss in here. And of course you can see there's other just plant material in here from uh, growing in this bed, which is all good. A little bit of uh, landscape up here. But this, this is a wonderful light mix, which makes it easy for the sweet potatoes to grow without being deformed. And I do do it the depth of a cinder block. So whatever the depth of a cinder block is, maybe eight inches or a little more, um, that's the depth that I have grown them in. So let's go head over to see oh, how I make these beds. So this bed I started early in the summer. Um, I didn't have grow mix to put in it, but I did want the area to start having the weeds be gone. And so we put down cinder block and then I get this four foot wide landscape fabric at a big box store. This happened to come from Sam's Club, but I've seen it at other places. This is four feet wide. It comes in a roll that's about 200 plus feet long and it's relatively inexpensive. I want to say I paid about 30, 35 dollars for this roll and 220 feet is a lot of landscape fabric. So we laid this down and then we laid the brick right over the landscape fabric. So we don't have a lot of weeds coming up through these holes. Now some people like to grow things in the holes. I don't generally do that, but that gives a little better weed control of things coming in. Now it still will sneak up around the edges, but that's easy enough to clear away with some clippers or, uh, or a weed eater. But if you use a weed eater to clean around your beds, you want to make sure that you're having someone hold a piece of cardboard or something along there so all those weeds from the weed eater don't blow into your beds. The beauty of a grow bed is you have control over the weeds, but not if you blow them in with your lawnmower or your weed eater. So it's about time for me to come around here and trim this all up and get rid of all that weed seed. But eventually this bed here is going to be filled with the mix similar to that bed over there. Now last year we had about 11 feet by, let me see what do I have here, 11 feet by two, two and a half feet and we got 120 pounds of sweet potatoes. This year we had a 10 foot 8 inch bed by 30 inches wide and we got 202 pounds. Now the voles took a good chunk, maybe, I don't know, I'm going to guess 40 pounds of those. But nonetheless, 160 pounds of edible sweet potatoes out of that bed is still a tremendous harvest. And um, I count that as a tremendous blessing. Once you harvest your sweet potatoes, you want to lay them out in a single layer somewhere where it's going to be warm, 80 to 85 degrees and humid, and let those cure for about 10 days. And then after that 10 days, um, you can wrap them in newspaper and store them in boxes in a cool place and that will inhibit sprouting and um, help your potatoes to continue to sweeten. That initial 10 days of curing helps to start break down the starches in the sweet potato which will give them that wonderful sweet flavor. And I have found that even eating them immediately after the warm curing, they're not as sweet as I would like them. But as time goes along, as they store wrapped up in those boxes and stored away, they get sweeter and sweeter as the time goes along. And then they're quite delicious. And that's it. Uh, God bless you as you get out in the fresh air and sunshine. And I hope that uh, gardening will be something that you will find relaxing, pleasurable, and profitable.